Hello, everyone. Here is another edition of this fool, <laughs> Daryl Brooks. All right. Uh, I believe that the jury is coming in. That's why the state is standing. I don't know why Zach is not, but we'll find out. Come on. Oh, this fool is in the auxiliary courtroom, so you know what that's all about. See, this doesn't look good in front of the jury. This does not look good in front of the jury because they know, obviously, there's something that went wrong that warranted why he's in that other courtroom. He is just causing all kinds of chaos for his own self. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> but the state ain't complaining about that. They're basically saying, thank you. Thank you. I wish the judge could have kept him in there, you know, for the duration of the trial. At least she would have had a lot more control over his mouth versus, you know, um, well, we know she didn't gag him, even though she had the inherent authority to do so. Well, she definitely could have kept him over there in the neighboring courtroom. Why not? Given, given his plethora Thank of you, disruption. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, at the moment, Mr. Brooks is appearing from another courtroom. This must not be held against him in any way and must not influence your verdict in any manner. At this time, I will advise the jury that the defense case is rested, and I'll ask the state whether there's any rebuttal evidence to present. No rebuttal, Your Honor. All right. Then, with that, I will declare the evidentiary phase of this trial concluded. I'm going to excuse the jury for the remainder of the day so that the parties and I uh, go through all of the jury instructions um, and I anticipate bringing you in tomorrow morning. Um, instructions may very well take most of the day. My hope is to then have the closing arguments and then have the case be turned over to the jurors. If not by tomorrow evening, sometime Wednesday morning or early afternoon. With that, I'll rise for the jury then. Please turn your notebooks into the civilian bailiffs. I'll get them back. Now you see what kind of a fair empire she is? Excuse me, umpire. You see how fair she was? Because she told the jurors not to allow his appearance in that neighboring or adjacent courtroom to influence their verdict. She didn't have to do that. She could have said, uh-huh, I ain't saying nothing. They see him over there. He ain't over there for no reason. His mouth got him over there. But her being fair, she let them know. You know, not to, in other words, not to be biased about this in any way. So, again, he could never, he could never argue or try to impugn challenging that he didn't have a fair trial. Because he would clearly be wrong. Okay, come on. During deliberations. Now, if I, if, if I was the judge, I probably wouldn't have said nothing to the jurors. Let them, let them figure out why he was over there. They already know. That's why. <laughs> I guess that's why everybody's not fit for every job. See, I, I'm not fit to be a judge. Because, see, I, I would have probably went off. <laughs> and that probably would have helped him. See, she, that's why she knew what he was doing. She didn't feed into that. Because this could have, this could, this whole thing could have turned around and he could have derailed it by default. And next thing you know, now we got a new trial. And these people, these families got to go through this again. This would be the third horror show. The first one was at the, the parade incident, the second horror show was the trial. And then a new trial? Come on. Judge Dora knew exactly what she was doing. Come on. Everybody ain't fit to be no judge. I know I ain't. <laughs> Thank you. Be seated. Before we begin, I will have Teresa print off what at least we do have for both parties. I'd like to take a short comfort break. Um, I'll invite Mr. Brooks to come back over. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, you at your own risk we'll when you invite him. start with that jury instruction conference. We'll take about 10 minutes. Thank you, everyone. We are in recess.
when you invite Mr. Brooks back, you are inviting him at your own risk because you know that it's going to be opposition and manic, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, um, again, um, like I said, uh, we, you know, you know, a lot of people fault Judge Doro for allowing Daryl to express himself. But, you know, what? that's really no different than the way Detective Carpenter, if you notice, he let Daryl talk. But he strategically did that so Daryl can um, prejudice his own self. You know, he never asked for a lawyer while he was in there. Well, guess what? Prosecutors love that. Well, well, Detective Cute, Detective Carpenter, he's a detective, but he like he love he love when you don't mention no attorney because now he can get information to use against you. And so what am I saying? Judge Doro let him talk, do all that, so that way that can go against him in a potential appeal. In other words, she's cutting off the likelihood of all of that by le- by giving him carte blanche to bury his own to bury his own self. How about that? It's just, it's it's called a strategic move. Okay, let's move. Let's uh, fast forward this because I want to get to the rest of the trial. Is this it? Okay, let's see what this is. Fair enough. There's 107 pages. I certainly can give the parties some time to continue to read through them. Isn't it so peaceful having him in that other? Oh, what did he do? He built a little fort. Look at it. <laughs> Any other time he wanted to be on camera cutting up, now he want he don't want to be seen. This man. Mm-mm-mm. Mr. Brooks is requesting to go back to his cell at this point. I'm going to deny that request. That he can happen. remain in the other courtroom. The only reason why he wants to go back to a cell is because he feel left out because he's not in that main courtroom. But then he always complained about why he was removed. Are you serious? So you think Judge Doyle just put you there for no reason? You didn't have a foul mouth. Okay. I mean, you're not there for no reason. That's why the jurors ain't stupid. She tried to protect you by telling them not to allow this to influence their verdict. But it's your mouth that got you there. You don't know when to shut the hell up. He's stupid. Just plain dumb. Like, this was going to help him. Like, did he really think he was going to win this case? (laughs) Well, of course he didn't know. Of course he wasn't going to win it. But he thought he could do it through tactics by trying to piss off the judge to derail what was going on. The calls for a mistrial. He knew what he was doing. It's just the problem was he was doing it at his own risk. And the risks worked against them because Judge Doyle did not feed into that crap. She saw exactly what he was trying to do. He was trying to thwart the evidence that was against him. He was trying to thwart what was going to happen. He was trying to thwart the inevitable. I know he's muted, but I can certainly hear him from this side he appears to be yelling at the top of his lungs i mm. can't decipher what he's yelling it don't even matter and then if you notice he start talking about the, the y'all remember the trial where he was saying why am i muted i i have the right of free speech but what he didn't understand was that doesn't go what unfettered 
He does not have the autonomy to say anything he wants to say. Exactly. No different than you can't, you can't, you know, smoking weed is legal in some states, but you can't smoke it everywhere, meaning that it's not unfettered. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> you got to be careful where you do it at. And this is what he doesn't understand. So they are. I'll advise Mr. Brooks without a specific waiver of his right to be present, even if it's from the remote courtroom, he's going to remain in that courtroom. He should have, he should have been there from the get go. That would require him to have a colloquy with me. Now, this is where the challenge is going to come in because she's trying to get him to be participatory and then he's going to try to stall by not answering directly. So he's giving like <coughs> he's talking about other things, but she'll she'll ask him something directly. He's talking about something else. And then he would say, you can't rush me to judgment. Well, guess what? You can't stall the proceedings. So you think you can stall and that's going to hold up in the Court of Appeals? Do you think they ain't going to see what she was trying to do? He's a fool. And not a fool. I'm going to try to keep it, keep my voice down, y'all, because y'all know this idiot can make my blood pressure just rise to a crescendo relative to the likes of which no one has ever seen. <laughs> So I'm going to try to be mellow tonight. Now that's going to be challenging, especially when we're dealing with this idiot. It is very challenging <laughs> to be calm, especially when he's talking and you can't make sense of what he's saying. He can't say that... He wasn't given a fair trial. He can't. The judge even let him even interrupt the state while they was giving their closing. I mean, how much rope was he allowed to get? So he he can't say this was unfair. Mr. Brooks, I know you are still muted by me, but I know the audio is working, but I would ask you to specifically advise if there are any specific jury instructions that you are asking be read to the jury. See, he ain't gonna answer. That's his way of stalling. He know what he doing. That's the thing. But this judge has patience to the likes of which I've never seen before. And this is and this is is gonna be an uphill battle for him because he can't understand how come the judge is not feeding into what I'm trying to do. Because she's smarter than you. She know your game. Everything he did in this trial was for the purpose of delay. Just like he trying to delay sentencing. Talking about he had other cases and stuff going on. So what? We're not letting this surpass the, the year anniversary, anniversary of this tragedy that you did. No. We need finality. Finality to the sense that we know that you ain't, you, you'll never come out of there. All right, let me calm down because I feel my, my adrenaline kick it in. <laughs> I feel it kick it in. Oh, I just loved in the trial when he tried to make Erica look bad. Oh, and Zach. Zachary came with a virtual hammer and ha took that hammer and bust him right over the head, right into reality. Ooh, did that. Mr. Brooks, did that if you have specific instructions or categories of instructions that you believe this court should consider, I need you to write them down on a piece of paper. If you don't have, I believe I see a writing utensil. I'm not sure if I see a pad of paper. We'll make sure you have that. But given your current demeanor, um, which is still seems quite animated, right, and a loud raised voice, I'd ask that you write it down.
Wait, he ain't gonna do that. See, this is a tactic where he's upset that he's in that adjacent courtroom, but then when he comes back to the main courtroom, then there's even more disruptions. So it's like either way, you can't win for losing. Well, in his case, he can't win. How about that? <laughs> That's why he is behind his head dodge now. Never had a chance. But I will say, now let me say this. His tactic could have worked given if they had a judge presiding over this that did not have the patience. He probably could have won on a mistrial. See, everybody ain't, everybody ain't Judge Doro. Everybody ain't got the patience because I know I sure didn't. I think she was a gift from God to preside over that case. Because who would have the tolerance to deal with that? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm surprised Judge Duro did not go off. <laughs> like, are you serious? But she she dealt with it. She did it all the way to the end. They should have gave her a, a year off vacation for dealing with that. There's no way that she had the forbearance. She had the forbearance to deal with his shenanigans and his buffoonery throughout this entire trial. How's the state doing on its review? Okay. And like I said before, this prosecution team did an A1 job. They did an A1 job. They made sure they had everything intact to present to that jury. And just like Judge Doro said, the jury are the judge of the facts and the judge is the judge of the law. And that's exactly what the state did. They provided facts. And the problem with Darrell was he was presenting speculation. You can't win on speculation. Uh uh. You can't win on hearsay. And it was so evident throughout the trial, given his ignorance in terms of attempting to be an attorney, because clearly he didn't know what he was doing. Like he was questioning people on their credibility of what they reported, but he didn't know that that was hearsay because that was given as a summary from the officer who wrote the summary. So why didn't he have enough intellect to subpoena the officer, the one that wrote the summary? When he questioned the witnesses, trying to make it seem like they changed their story and all this. He's stupid. He didn't know what he was doing, clearly. <laughs> clearly, clearly <clears throat> what is he doing it look like he's well she said he's yelling but she can't decipher what he's saying but you can tell that he is still quite animated here I'm surprised the judge didn't make him um, remove or have the bailers remove those boxes <laughs> Now you know what he's probably you know what he's doing? I think he's trying to create a situation where he's trying to make it seem as if he's having some type of discussion with uh the bailiffs back there. And you know the bailiffs ain't supposed to be talking to him during the proceeding. At one point during the trial, I think he said that I he was make a continuing record that hold on. I think one point during the trial that he, he said that he was talking to the bailiffs and the judge had to question one of the bailiffs to make sure that there was no colloquy between uh, uh, them and Daryl. But that they Daryl lied. He was just trying to create. That was another tactic. Another tactic. <laughs>
he was trying to throw them under the bus. Mr. Brooks is still, I can still hear him even though he's muted due to mm. his level, his tone of voice and volume level that he is using from the neighboring courtroom. Well, he got to be pretty loud if the mics ain't on. Pretty boisterous. And she and and she had the inherent authority to gag him, but she didn't. So he can't make it seem like oh they, they gagged me. Well, they should have. She had every right to had every right. So all of these should be included, but they just put them in, in numerical order. Unfortunately, this is how our justice system is. You can kill people and pretend to be an attorney and represent yourself, and apparently act like that. That ain't your name and all this other crap. This is this is nuts. This is insanity. I know one thing. I I can Which bet you, Attorney Jeremy Perry was probably happy to get off to get out of this. He probably the only attorney that appreciated being fired. <laughs> Dealing with this butthole. <laughs> I ain't never heard of nobody appreciating being fired. Mr. Brooks, fired. I'll advise you once again if there are any specific requests for either instructions or categories instructions that you want this court to consider, please write a note uh, to pass to the bailiffs who can let me know. <laughs> You see him rocking back and forth. Why hadn't she made him remove them boxes? I don't know why he got them boxes there anyway. He didn't go through. He didn't even know that the video was in there. And the discovery. Talk about he didn't receive them. That's because you didn't go through the box. You didn't go through that stuff thoroughly. But I can guarantee you that even though the day that he was convicted was a great day, but yet it was still bittersweet. I think it's bitter because they didn't have the the death penalty. I think that would have been a win-win. <laughs> At least would it, it would have served as equality. You took my family, baby. Now we're going to take you out of here. How about that? And I bet you one thing. You think, let me tell you something. You think those prisoners in prison don't know what he did? Wait till they put him in GP. There might be equality. In other words, they ain't got to wait for no death penalty to be, to, to or no legislator to make one. There's going to be one once he get in GP. I guarantee you. And the only reason why they probably are safeguarding him is because he has other cases that they need to deal with and so why put him in gp and kill him now let's get him at the end <laughs> that could be why i mean i don't know but I, i'm just trying to find you know where it makes the most sense Otherwise, why would why else would they be safeguarding a person that killed six people? And just it, it basically impacted that entire city. So we will see. Let's fast forward this. Let's see what else is going on in here. Let's see. 
Uh oh. All right, I've made a note of that. What's the next either, issue? Either one county gonna charge you with it or y'all, but it can't be both. It's the same. It's pursuant to the same exact thing that I was gonna bill for. The same exact thing. The same exact case. So why are we giving the jury instructions on two cases from another county? I've made a note of that. What other what other requests do you have? So why is he talking about the same thing as she's asking? for another request man this is ridiculous so i'm not I, i'm not i'm not even able i'm not even able to adequately defend myself present evidence do anything because everything i say is going to be found a reason for it not to be valid because it isn't valid you have no defense here, what, what, what is the mr brooks <laughs> Why should I be here when the I've made a note of your request as to count 74. Do you have any other requests as Once it relates again. to the jury instructions? Why are we why are we even having jury instructions? Why do I got why do I have to even sit here in this courtroom at this point? What the hell? Because everything you've been doing, you've been doing without my consent anyway. So you're gonna find a way to do this without my consent. So why do I need to be here for your objection for lack of consent is noted for the record. Okay, yeah. Any you, any you, other you requests, talk, sir? You talk a good game. You talk a good game to save yourself a dumb face. Oh, my God. It has no merit in your court. Oh, my God. All right. I've asked him repeatedly, many, many, many times. I've advised him, and I'll advise him once again. If he fails to answer the question, I'm moving on. Do you have any other requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir? Okay. You can't move on because I haven't given you consent to it. Right. Wait a minute, hold on. What does he mean he hasn't given her consent? Wait a minute, is he, does he think that he's the judge and she's the defendant? Like, what the hell is going through his mind? Bro, he really thinks he's in control of the courtroom. Like, I can kill six people, but it's almost like saying I can kill six people and I haven't given you consent to lock me up. Really? <laughs> what the <laughs> oh my god this is this is just insanity oh i've never seen anything like this this is unprecedented insanity i mean you got people that are crazy but i ain't never heard of this kind of crazy <laughs> did not answer so i'm muting him again I, the only request that he is made i mean he's one of the he's a top tier when it comes to insanity. <laughs> as it relates to the jury instructions, as he Stupid. pounded his fist once again, raised his voice. Um, I understand, I really do, that he's upset with my decision to cut off his ability to present a defense, but that decision was made based on his conduct and his conduct alone, as I've outlined already on the record. Um, so the only request that he made uh, at was as it relates to the bail jumping counts, um, I'm denying those requests. Absolutely. Whether it be to dismiss one count or to dismiss both on double jeopardy um, or to just not instruct. And by the way, uh, when she denied, it was a, there was several things that she would deny, which made sense because he didn't have anything that was fruitful or, or, or that, that, that would change her mind otherwise. Here's the thing, every time she made a ruling, he would always try to find a way to debate it. Now, she kept telling him invariably, look, if you have or have an issue with my ruling, if there's a conviction, take it up and appeal, which means all he was doing was wasting time arguing with the judge about a previous ruling or ruling that she ruled on, okay? That was a waste of time because that was the wrong place to do it. You got to take it up in appeals if you want to argue it because her ruling stands. Now, that could be interlocutory, which means it's not final. You could take it up into the court of appeals given that there's a conviction. So him and then he would ask her. Oh, I would like a reconsideration of your ruling. Why would the judge reconsider something that she already ruled? She's not changing her mind. If she changed her mind, then that defeated the purpose of her making the ruling. 
I would like a reconsideration of your order, your 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 ruling, Your Honor. Like she gonna say, "All right, Daryl, my bad. I'm gonna change my mind." He's a stupid fool. <laughs> stupid. Drop the jury. Um, however way I interpret it, I'm denying that. All right, let me go through the states. Your Honor, can I add one more? Sure. I'm sorry. One fifty four summary of evidence. I believe we had a map. Um, actually, two maps that summarize the. Um, we had three maps. I think the one was summarized his his route, the path that he took. Uh -huh. The other one summarized the victims who were struck in the specific locations. And the other one summarized the positions of the law enforcement officers at the various intersections and throughout the parade routes. I'll make a note of that. We also I don't believe I saw the jury view instruction either. I don't I mean that was given to them at the time. I don't know that it needs to be reread, but I think we need to consider that as well. And that was my version of one fifty two. Mm. All right, so let me go through uh, the list from the state. What is he doing with them boxes? Uh uh. It, uh, -uh. They need to make it move, move them back. Move them boxes. So, so I we consider can the request by the state. Um, I am going to rely on what information they put in the charging document. I'm going to deny the request to include the specific case numbers. Um, there is evidence, of course, that was received regarding the two separate cases out of Milwaukee County. Uh, that form the basis for both of the bail jumping counts. It will be up to the jury to review the evidence and make a determination as to the verdict forms. Now, you know, bail jumping is even even worse because it's like you get out on bail and then you commit more crimes. And then he did the most heinous of them all. He killed people. How worse, how bad is that to do that while out on bail? <laughs> that is that That is beyond sick. <laughs> That's so nuts. that were referenced previously, at least the description of them in the jury instructions. That um, obviously the third account of bail jumping is incorrect. That needs to be battery, and that change will be made. I'm also having Madam Clerk include all of the numbers for the jury instructions when they go back, so it's very clear. Some of them did not have them on, just frankly from prior cases that she and I have worked on. But in this case, I want to be very clear with all of the numbers. So I think I've addressed the first two bullet points. As far as the motive instruction as a standalone, I believe that is appropriate. And I'll instruct Madam Clerk to include that. We need to find out what he's doing behind him back here. <laughs> as far as where it goes, I'm going to just, in, uh, any instructions that we add. Dude, I wonder what he's doing behind him bars. <laughs> where he is now. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, by the way, I saw uh, somebody had posted or uploaded uh, a video of pictures of the sale where he is located. And, oh, it is very small. His little enclosure. He's in a little enclosure. With his, it's still got the nerve to have the Bible in there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Should just be in the numerical order. Unless we, unless there's a other request that's made, then the state also made a request as it relates to jury instruction seventy, mm -hmm. which is found on page sixty-five. Ain't there something given so all as the? As it problem? relates to this, the state is asking that I simply. Um, instruct the jury based on the pattern instruction and not include the more that second paragraph i had previously advised the jury with another paragraph that i was contemplating including even if i took out that big paragraph that just said at times mr brooks has appeared from another courtroom this must not influence your verdict in any manner what's the state's position on including that but taking out the paragraph you request to be taken out it's fine. Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on uh -oh. that? 
Uh oh. Which is uh, so jury instruction 70 has to do with the defendant proceeding pro se. The pattern instruction would be basically the first paragraph. It's I need the bailiffs to move the boxes away yes. from his face. I need to yeah. be able to see them. <laughs> move keep them, them on the table, but they need to be moved off to the side. And if he does it one more time, then I will instruct the bailiffs to take the boxes away. Those are trial prep materials. Um, if there's something in those materials related to jury instructions, he's in, he should take those out now. Otherwise, they need to be moved away from the microphones and away from from blocking his face. It's, I'm not putting them here. I'm not putting them here. Thank you. I'm putting them here. We need visibility. Brooks, do you have any position the on the verbiage of jury instruction yeah, seventy no, on page no sixty-five? No are you are you my accuser? Oh my God! Are you my accuser? All right, he's choosing not to answer, so I'll mute. But see, you, you know, this is the, but see, this is nothing but um, this this is ammunition. For for the judge getting this on the record for the purpose of um, appeal, and this is ammunition for the state. You know he's his, he he's he's cutting his own throat by doing this. That that's all this is. Again, that's it's all this is. That he's deciding not to participate. It's in unfortunate this. that he's cutting um, his own throat. I agree throat. with the state. I don't need to highlight with that second paragraph. I will take that out, but I will include in. The paragraph that reads at times comma mr brooks has appeared from another courtroom period this must not influence your verdict in any manner well i think listen i think the jury already listen that ain't gonna help it, it, it is going to influence their verdict because they know he's an idiot they don't like him do you think the jury appreciated having to keep um, leaving being being excused from the trial because of his repeated interruptions do you think they like that you think that the what he's doing is not going to influence the verdict i mean i understand what the judge is saying but i don't think they uh-uh no that they they ain't going by the book on this they can't stand him as they shouldn't as nobody we none of us should be able to stand him we can't i can't stand him this man is a global pariah all around the world, you got people in England talking about this, people in London talking about this, people all around the world, a global pariah. And as I stated before, he would never get a jury in there that did that, that wasn't aware. Let's put it this way he would never get a jury in there that ever liked him because they know. This man is guilty. I'll even go off the limb and say he would never get a fair trial as well as he shouldn't. It wasn't fair what he did, so why should he get a fair trial? Ooh. All right, let me calm down. Y'all know how I get when I get to talking. <laughs> oh. Turn around is fair play. Like I told y'all before, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Inclusion of the instructions that were put on the last couple of pages um, include 325 impeachment of witness. It's prior conviction. The part about juvenile adjudication should be struck from the heading. And it should read evidence has, be, has been received that one or more witness in this trial has been convicted of a crime. There were two witnesses that was applicable to. The remainder will be as is. And that was one witness for the state, one witness for the defense. He shouldn't even be referred. Add that if Mr. Brooks has any position about these requests, uh -uh. He, should, uh -uh. Um, he is currently muted. He can uh, raise his hand and I'll unmute. Otherwise, he can pass a note to the bailiff or simply tell the bailiff who can then tell me and I can unmute him. But unless he tells me that, I'm going to assume he's made a decision not to provide further comment based upon the last statement he made to me. Then 141, um, I am, I believe that's appropriate given the evidence that has been received that's on identification of defendant. I was going to say that I don't think she should even refer to him as the defense <laughs> because in theory, what defense did he have? 
I don't know what it is. It's, he didn't have no design. Not at all. Is an issue. Um, but listen, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I think we get the point. Um, the man, again, is a global pariah. He is hated all around the world. I think his own his only supporter is that man, that black man, Jay Prince, and he ought to be ashamed of himself. I don't know if he was doing that for publicity purpose. If that is for publicity purposes, that's bad publicity, man. Because that's showing that you endorsed what he did. And that is disgusting. That is disgusting. And as a black man myself, I'll say it to another black man. That is disgusting. All right. Those of you that will leave a comment, come on, share and like. And, and thank you for listening.